Welcome back to another Study Force tutorial. In this video, we'll be showing you how to calculate the pH of a buffer solution. Question 1 reads, calculate the pH of a buffer solution that is 0.100 molar in HC2H3O2, that's acetic acid, and 0.100 molar in NaC2H3O2. The first thing that I want to do is write down a chemical equation showing the breakdown of this acid and the formation of H3O plus and the anion of this molecule. So we have one molecule of acetic acid joining together with H2O, and that's a liquid, and this is aqueous. This forms hydronium ions, H3O plus, aqueous, plus the anion of this molecule, which is C2H3O2 minus. We're looking for the pH of this solution. So technically we need H3O plus, its equilibrium concentration. Because once we find its concentration, we can substitute it into this formula to find the pH. That's the definition of pH right there. So to do this, we need to create an ice table. I, C, E, where I represents initial change in equilibrium. We're told the initial concentration of acetic acid, it's 0 0.100 molar. We don't care about the concentration of water because it is in its liquid form. And it's not in the equilibrium expression anyway. For hydronium, this one, since acetic acid is a weak acid, it won't dissociate completely. So we write down that it's approximately equal to 0 molars. And we're told in the question that the anion eventually will couple with sodium and its concentration will be 0 0.100. So I'll write down 0 0.100 molar. What we're looking for is the equilibrium expression, this last row. To find out that expression, we have to set one of these molecules as x for the change. I'll set this one as x, and it doesn't matter which one you set as x. We will compare molecule to molecule stoichiometrically. This is a one-to-one -one ratio, so this will also be x, but since we're comparing reactants with products, this should be negative x. And similarly, there's a one-to-one -one ratio here, so this is also negative x. That being said, you wanna make sure that after you create this chemical equation that it is balanced, and luckily it was balanced. To find E, this expression, which is most important for us, we add I plus C. So add those two together, this one becomes 0 0.100 plus x. This is negative x, we're adding 0 with negative x, and we're adding these two together, we get the following. Now we write down the equilibrium expression. Since this is an acid, we write down K sub A is equal to the concentration of the products being multiplied. So the concentration of H3O plus in its equilibrium state is negative x. And the concentration of this molecule is, as written here, 0 0.100 minus x. The concentration of the reactant, the only reactant, we don't care about H2O because it's a liquid, is 0 0.100 plus x. Now you need to look into a table that's probably found in your textbook for the K, the constant value of acetic acid. In the textbook that I have, it is equal to 1.8 8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. So I'll substitute that right into there. Now normally to solve such an equation, you would need the quadratic formula. But since our k sub a value is so small, there's a little trick that you can use. It turns out that if this number is very small, you can eliminate in the equation where you see plus x and minus x. So with that said, we can safely remove this minus x and this plus x. You can't remove this one because that's not being added or subtracted to anything. By doing this, it actually makes the solving process very simple. In fact, let me show you. Let's hypothetically say that we did remove minus x and plus x from this. We would end up with the expression negative x times 0 0.100 over 0 0.100. You can then cancel these two out, leaving you with 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5 is equal to negative x dividing both sides by negative 1 to eliminate this negative 1 in front, we end up with negative 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5 is equal to positive x. So I've just removed that negative. Now, of course, you want to make sure that your assumption of removing the 
plus x and the minus x is correct. So what you can do is find the percentage of this number compared to 0 0.100. And if it's less than 5, then you've made the correct assumption. So negative 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5 divided by 0 0.100 times 100%. And ignore this negative. So 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5 divided by 0.1, the number at the bottom, times 100 gives us 0.018%. That's less than 5. So the fact that you removed the plus x and the minus x is a good assumption to make. This value right here represents x, and now I can substitute that right into here to find the concentration of H3O+. So the concentration of this molecule is exactly this number, except the positive version. Let me write that down. And now I can use the definition for pH shown up here to find the pH of the solution. So negative log of this number, 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Remember, there are two significant figures here. So whatever answer we get after the decimal place, there should be two digits. Negative log 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5 gives us 4.74. And we need two digits after the decimal because there are two significant figures here. 4.74 is the pH of this buffer solution. If you'd like to see the answer to question number two, make sure you watch part two of this series, and we hope to see you soon.